Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at Maker Faire 2015, and I'm at the Google booth with Chris Tabona, who's in charge of making science at Google. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this death robot with the knife, giving robots guns and weapons, seems unwise, Chris. It, it is unwise. You don't want to normally do this. This is actually a hard drive destruction robot that we've repurposed for fun for Maker Faire. Um, his normal job is taking a hard drive, putting it inside a socket to get it deleted, and then throwing it in a chipper shredder. But we wanted to do something a little more fun, and, and Taliver, the, the operator and the person who runs this robot normally, he's like, well, I've always wanted to do the thing from aliens where you go oh yeah bishop in the can in the in yeah. the breakfast yeah so we call it bishop's game that's you know we have a little sign up about that so yeah so we have a fake hand a fake hand not an intern hand not a googler hand not a public hand so over there and and so yeah and the it's just going around doing that so next year you guys are going to set it up so you can put your real hand in on top of the mark and just don't flinch <laughs> we're probably not going to i mean a lot of people come to maker fair so you know someone's going to go in there and go what hey what ah you know, and then we have a reputation for making killer death robots, and that's not who we are. Okay. Okay, so this is something you guys did for fun. Can we go inside and check out some yeah. of the For Series projects? Behind you actually is one of the first uh, mapping planes that we deployed to test uh, an under camera rig. This was almost 10 years old, you know. Um, so before we, we used Cessnas with under camera, uh, underwing cameras, mm -hmm. we tested the camera rigs and the IMUs and the GPSs out on these kinds of things first. And then we deployed widely with aircraft. And this was before we had Skybox imaging and, and, and satellite deals with folks like GOI. So. But, but off the shelf, a lot of things that Google does with hardware are using off the shelf oh, yeah. components in non traditional applications, right? Well, I mean, we. It's funny, in some ways it's even a traditional application, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, anyone could have bought this, any any hobby shop in the world, you know, and, and, and done exactly what we did, so, you know. And then we took all the pictures in, registered them, balanced them out, found out where the clouds were, and. You know, yeah, so it was pretty exciting for us. Very cool. Yeah. So let's keep going. Okay. So uh, what you're looking at here, and, and you might want to focus up here a little bit too, because that's where it, it mates with the balloon. So this is Project Loon, which is um, uh, Google's uh, uh, net distributed network using giant balloons up in the stratosphere, right? That's right. Yeah, you know, just like anybody else. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, that thing. We all do it. We all do it. But the idea is, is that we can we can sort of beam in 4G coverage uh, in areas that don't have it, or where it's been destroyed or something in the event of a natural disaster. So crisis. Nepal, uh, Haiti. Nepal, stuff like that. Philippines last year, you know, Katrina here. I mean, it it actually happens a lot more and a lot more regularly than people you know wish. So, so, um, but yeah, and also we want to provide bandwidth to people. So this is a, uh, an interesting way to going about it. And, and this is actually, you know, Larry Page. I remember asking him for the him asking if we could do this years and years ago. And and the Loon team really stepped up and they came up with a way to do this. And this is out of our Google X division. So look, I'm I'm beaming at you now. So this is um, one of the things I didn't realize about this is that Loon is a mesh network, right? I'm pretty sure yes, what, okay. the, the, but the kind of it, the kind of data that it sends along the mesh is not not what you think of like the high bandwidth data, you know. Um, although there's some of that, it also sends like weather information and information about the stratosphere between the different loons because the way it moves around is it go, it goes up and down. It doesn't go side to side or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it uses yeah. a small a small you know motivator, a small turbine, I think, and and it pushes itself up and down along along the balloons. Uh, axis, I guess, but the the stratosphere then moves it in different ways, uh, and so it, it trades information about the stratosphere then. But they're still tethered to the ground. But the the, the tether to the ground is it just a dumb cable, right? No, 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 there's no tether. Oh, there's no tether. So you're thinking of the of the power system that Makani, a company we purchased, is right. working on over in the Alameda, not far from you know one of the test areas for the big floating floating turbines thing. Okay, I'll ask yeah, another so question then. So that's a little different. We didn't get one of those in for this <laughs> one, but yeah, this is this is strictly for like uh, bandwidth deployment. So, so these are never tethered. And also, a tether that goes 135,000 feet is a very heavy tether. Because I mean, we've thought about these things before. And, and the thing about the Makani uh, power uh, uh, kites is they're actually pulling on that tether in a predictable way to drive a turbine, right? And, and that generates power. And we've tested that, uh, I, think, I think, in Maui or in Waikiki, I'm not sure which, near Diamond Head, so, yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so can, let's run through what's inside here, because I've never seen inside so one of these battery, before. Uh, battery, uh, you know, controllers, transmitters, you know, there's some more transmitters over here, uh, antennas underneath, uh, there's some solar power charging circuitry somewhere here. There's a big solar power rig that it, that it has off to the side. We're on top of the balloon. I don't know exactly where that goes. The balloon guy will be here later so you can get better information. But yeah, it's, it's actually really, it's, so it's solar powered. It's supposed to fly for a very long time. Um, you know, and, and and under controlled flight for that whole time. So yeah, and that's why you use such a big battery. This is a 928 watt hour battery. So that's a lot of phone charges. It, it, it is a lot of phone charges. You know, but you know, it's a lot of phones that might connect to it. So yeah. So we're also showing like some of our Googler projects. So this is a uh, this is sort sort of disassembled. Uh, 
uh, microscope, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that 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 deck over here built to look at uh, Daph Daphnia. Yep, Daphnia. Those are a freshwater crustacean that uh, eat algae, yeast, and bacteria, and then get eaten by fish. And what uh, I'm just showing people here is, you know, they're floating around in the chamber. They're being zoomed up by this webcam right here, mm -hmm. just so that people can see the morphology of them. They've got these little flippers on the top of their head, and then they've got a bunch of babies in their back. And then what I've done here is I've built um, an automated microscope based on a ShapeOco platform. And so what it's able to do is automatically visit all of these individual little samples inside this plate right here. And then if you come over here, the system is constantly acquiring multiple images from locations. And so for example, for this picture right here, this is stitched from 16 individual photos. And then you can keep zooming into it because it was using a very high resolution magnifier when so, it was taking the picture. So it's like a gigapixel type image that you yes, can keep this going. Is exactly. Further, right? I built this because I made a manual gigapixel image that was very tedious and programmers are ultimately lazy so they spend an inordinate amount of time scaling up what they do and so I made an automated microscope and now I can just click a button and it will do exactly the same thing that used to take me hours. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay Chris, what's next on, on our tour? Uh, so we, we have a couple of uh, both abandoned projects like this one here which was a uh, a rotator for phones. We've got uh, some emerging projects like uh, we have some multispectral cameras that we're working on in Google X. We've got uh, so, so in case you've ever wondered when you visited the Google store, like the Google Shopping Express mm -hmm. or or the Nexus device store, you know how those 3D models got made. Yeah. It's basically something like this. This was one of the first prototypes of what we called the Katamari scanning platform. And it would basically take pictures with the three cameras, and and it has a rotating platform, and then it would integrate the images and software down to submillimeter resolution for the 3D model, and then it would map the textures onto that, so it makes for a nice experience, right? Very uh, cool. Thank you so much uh, for showing us around, Chris. There you go. Um, what are you? What? What? what what's the? Why are you here at Google at Maker Faire? Yeah. Um, so Google really uh, wants to encourage like uh, hackerspaces and makerspaces to be successful, and and so we're trying to figure out exactly what the heck that means, right? So in the meantime, we're providing safety gear in the form of cup roof gloves and aprons and everybody who comes to Maker Fair is getting like a free pair of safety glasses um, you know so that you know schools and makerspaces can be you know sort of safe places to have fun and and do cool stuff so and then we're trying to figure out what a makerspace needs in, ter in terms of consumables and hardware software and, hardware yeah exactly people, the whole thing right but we're like a brand new group so we both basically wanted to have a really great Maker Fair experience for everybody so awesome thank you so much Chris Absolutely. Um, we'll have more from Maker Fair 2015 on tested see you guys soon Bye.